today on Be Something Wonderful, how to give yourself the luxury of having it all. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I heard from one of you that uh, commented and said, Tom, that, that video yesterday really resonated with me because lately I've felt exhausted, frustrated, and disappointed because I have been banging away at the affirmations and imagining in the processes with no results. And so I understand what you're saying and I, and I get the message and, and it does really resonate with me. But here's my question. With my, the bills are piling up. I, 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 you know, creditors are calling. My bank balance is really low. How do I get into that space to, to know, to, to really believe that, that I have what I want or to believe that I am what I want to be. Well, guys, we're going to talk about this today and more. Here's what I want to say, and I've talked about this before, and really, um, Vadim Zeeland uh, points this out as well in Reality Transurfing, but it all comes down to this. Choosing and giving yourself permission to have it all. Hear this again. It's choosing to have it choosing to be it, giving yourself permission to be all that you want to be, giving yourself permission to have it all. That's the only thing that's holding you back. It's about, it's, and again, it, it's not trying to affirm your way to, by trying to process your way to God. Remember, God, you are an individualized aspect of God, and God is the process, so you are the process. Right? So you're trying to use a process to get to God when God is the process. You are that process. Right? So choose, allow, and give yourself permission to have all you desire. That's what creates alignment of the heart and mind. Right? Because when you're trying, when you're affirming from a place of lack, from a place of looking at bills and a low bank balance, your heart just doesn't buy it. Right? Your heart is saying, okay, you're, you're, just, you're just affirming, but you don't believe it. Right? So when you do, though, when you do choose to allow yourself to have it, when you give yourself permission, you align your heart and mind. When you, the world will confirm your choice. The world will reflect that choice. It's just like one of you asked me, well, Tom, how do I be worthy? How do I move from, I'm, I'm always insecure. I feel, sometimes I feel socially awkward in settings. And, and how do I, how, how, what do I do about that? Stop trying to be, stop trying to uh, uh, prove your worthiness and just accept your inherent worthiness. Accept the truth of that you're worthy. The truth that, that of who you are, right? Stop trying, trying to not be socially awkward and just be yourself. When you do, the world will confirm you, this new you. Do you see this? Stop trying to be secure and you will be secure. It's that process. Remember, you are the process. The world will confirm your belief. It's only because you believe that you have to prove it or do something, or, or in, in terms of your bills piling up and, and your bank balance low, the 3D mind says, I gotta act on this. I've gotta work hard. I've gotta find this money. I've gotta, I've gotta find a way to get it. That's your 3D mind wants to pop into action out of stress, out of frustration, out of lack, right? When, when really you just need to move to that place, that I amness and know that it's all within you and call it forth, right? This is what we're talking about. And, and so you, you, the chosen ones choose themselves, right? And, and Vadim Zeeland talks about this. I love the way he talks about this. But all those that, 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 are, that have achieved what you would might call worldly success in any field is they chose themselves. It's not an outside force. It's the force within. Choose yourself. Be a chosen one, right? Then the power of infinity, that power that creates worlds, source energy, right? The energy of the quantum field consolidates around your choice and moves you to all you desire. And now you don't have any importance 
There's no doubt. There's no fear. There's no wanting. There's no envy. There's no frustration. There's no unworthiness. There's none of that. There's no, how can you compete with infinity? You have infinities within you. You're in no competition, right? There's no reason to envy others for what they have. It's all within you. There's no need to want it, to grasp for it, right? Simply giving yourself the luxury to have it all. Wow. That's powerful, but let's, let's unpack it. So, so you say, Tom, how can I believe it? Well, how can you give yourself permission to have it? That's the real question. How can you believe it? How can you give yourself permission to have it? To, is, is to know it, right? This is what you've said. Tom, how can I believe and, and, and feel fulfilled when I see the bills piling up and my bank balance is near, near zero? When, I, and when I'm staring at the problem is what you're basically saying. You're staring at and believing in the problem, right? You're, so you're trying to persuade yourself by imagining and affirming when you feel broke, right? When you're trying to persuade yourself by affirmations and imagining when you feel broke, it's all in vain. As you look at the problem and you make it real, you just affirm the problem. You make it even a bigger reality, a more firm reality. We know reality is always changing. But as you continue to stare at the problem, as you continue to affirm this feeling of being broke, this feeling of not having a way out, that's what you create. That's what Vadim Zeeling calls inner intention, right? Why? You're, look, you're looking through the eyes of the 3D intention or the 3D you, where, where you need to actually find the money, earn the money, borrow the money, or in other words, fix the lack or fix the problem. Do you see this, guys? There's no way out here. There's no bottom to this. There's no, the walls of the maze are, are you're going to continue to run around in that maze and not find a way out. How do you, collect, how do you get out? You let the walls collapse under their own weight. They collapse under the weight of their own importance, of their own belief of, in lack, right? When you give yourself permission and you choose to have it and choose to be it, the walls of importance, the walls of lack, the walls of belief that you can't do it collapse under their own weight. And you don't have to now run around in the maze anymore or the labyrinth because the way out is when the walls collapse. <laughs> right? So that's how you do it, guys. So let's, let's hit this a little bit more. Aligning with your God. We talked about this yesterday. I want to hit it again. Aligning with your God power, that power within you is more about knowing than believing. It's more of a knowing. It's within you. It's not processing your way there to the knowing, right? Remember, beliefs can be shaken. Believing leaves the door open for doubting, right? To, to, so it's a knowing, right? Where you don't leave the door open to doubting. It's a knowing. You're in, the, you're in that knowing. Choosing to give yourself permission to have or be what you want comes from an unalterable unity of heart and mind, right? Knowing that oneness with the creator, your I am. That's that knowing. When the mind tries to muscle your desires into reality by affirming without the heart on board, that leads to exhaustion and disappointment. That's what you said. You were exhausted and disappointed and frustrated. That's why when the mind tries to go do it on its own, that's what you're trying to do by affirming and imagining it from this state of lack, from staring at the problem. You're, 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 without the heart, you're not getting the heart on board. It leads to exhaustion, right? How do you get the heart on board? By choosing, by moving to that place, by choosing to have, the, giving yourself the luxury of having it, right? And that can be by imagining, right? When you imagine and illuminate your future slide, the frame of the wish fulfilled consistently just for the excitement and joy that it brings you within, the heart says yes and accepts this new state as who you are now. Hear this. So the question is, how then? How, if I'm going on my own to my 3D by affirming without the heart on board, how do I get the heart on board? That's how. It's by imagining 
or illuminating that future frame. It can be imagining from a state akin to sleep before you go to bed. It can just by, be by, by, by during the day, having that thought and putting yourself in that frame during the day, imagining, illuminating that future slide as you go about your business, but feeling the joy and excitement of it that it's coming in 3D, that it's already created in that dimensionally larger world, that, that, that I am, that God within you knows it's within you. And then you consistently imagine it or, or roll that, that frame, right? Move that frame, right? And consistently just for the excitement and joy that it brings within. The heart says yes and accepts that new, who you are now. That's why it requires persistence. Because the heart, to, for the heart to believe you, you've got to move to that place where you're feeling the joy and excitement of it coming in 3D, because you know it's already created on that dimensionally, in that dimensionally larger reality. That's how you do it. That's the unity of the heart and mind. That, that's, your, that's how your future desire manifests in 3D reality. It's a knowing. It's a choice. A choice to give yourself the luxury of having it. Right? That's where we, we sometimes don't give ourselves the luxury. We think it's for the chosen ones or for others. Or somehow somebody else has a process that works better than what I'm doing. And so you go on this search mission for processes all over YouTube looking for the next big process that works for somebody else. What's working really is, the, is that God process within. There, when it works, it's tapping into that power within you. You're becoming it. You're, you're standing in the conviction. You're giving yourself the luxury of being it and already having it. I've been affirming, this is what you said, and imagining, and it isn't working, right? Why isn't it working? That was your question. You learned all the processes. You followed all the steps. You never missed a day, you said. You were still without what you desire. What gives, you ask? What gives? What's the problem? You, you said you've been doing the steps, doing it every day, faithfully affirming in the morning you never forget, but it's become a chore. It's become an effort. It's become exhausting and disappointing. What's going on here? Well, uh, the prodigal son, I'm going to bring this up again, and I'm not talking about the second son this time, the prodigal that will refer to him. He went off and wasted his, remember, wasted his inheritance and then came back to God, right? Wasted, lost his way, right? Lost, his, lost the, the memory of how to, how to connect with that higher power, how to imagine, and then returned to God, right? Rose in consciousness. But I want to talk about the older son, right? The older son, uh, the older son was angry, that, that, the, when, that, that when, the, when the prodigal came back, the father accepted him in his arms and threw him a party, a celebration, right? The goat, the, the, the robe, the sandal, the ring, all of it, celebrating his son that, who died that now has come back to life, is reborn and, and acquiring now through his imagination everything he had before and more. Right? That's what the prodigal, that's what the first son, but the second son didn't like it at all, was jealous, was angry, was envious. Why? Here's what the second son says, the first son, the older son. Look, for so many years I've been serving you and I have never neglected a command of yours. This is Luke 15, 29. This is the first son who has always, quote, been with the father. Right? Never left like the prodigal. Never asked for his inheritance. Hear this. Never asked for his inheritance and never asked anything. But always sat there thinking, sitting there in the righteousness that, that, that he should have it. Right? Hear this. That's lack. That's limitation. That's competition. That's separation. That's poverty consciousness. Right? Thinking that, that I've always served you, I've always been here, I've been doing the processes, I've been faithfully doing what I'm supposed to do, right? But you're doing it from a, from a sense of separate from source, separate from the Father, separate from, from that, that, that wealth or that abundance that's already within you. Do you hear this? That even the Son who has always been with the Father did not recognize 
that that abundance of that God or that I am is within him the whole time. The prodigal, though, did realize that, wasted the, asked for the inheritance, wasted it, and then came back, rose in consciousness, learned again how to rise and use the imagination to be, do, or have whatever he wanted. That's the message here. And this is what the father says to the older son. Son, you have always been with me, and all that is mine is yours. Hear this. It's always been there, yet, yet he was sitting there in his self-righteousness, sitting there in his anger, in the jealousy, and never really acquired it, never, never noticed, never realized that that God power was within him to have whatever he wanted in any moment. He just needed to acquire it. How? By rising in consciousness, by using your imagination, by knowing, though, more importantly, by the choice in giving yourself the luxury of, of, of having it all, right? The, the, that first son had it all, but he didn't give himself the luxury of having it all. He didn't realize it. Instead, he sat there with his arms folded, looking at the, the, the second son getting the robe, getting the celebration, right? Getting the coat, <laughs> right? So the younger son... So give yourself permission to have the younger son born again, acquired it by right of consciousness. That's the only right you have. It's, it's all yours by right of consciousness. That's what the prodigal did, rose in consciousness, gave himself permission to have it all, Get, right? That's, so, the, that's, so, you're, so when you're struggling with the processes, when you're not giving yourself permission to have it all, you're like the first son struggling. You, you, you're doing it. You're faithfully serving the processes. You're never neglecting any command of that law. Yet, you're missing the recognition that it's already within you. That's the difference. That is the difference. So how do you get there? By imagining, but not, ma not imagining and, and, and affirming from a place of lack, from a place that you have to do it, that you have to serve the Father in that way. But do it out of the sheer joy, the sheer excitement that it's already within you and that you get to demonstrate that God power, that I am this, while you're in 3D duality by manifesting it or creating it or perceiving it and receiving it and allowing it in 3D reality. That's why you're here. Right? The, the, so this is big, guys. This is really big. Right? The pro, remember, he had the, know, he had the knowing within, not merely believing by following the rules, the processes, yet feeling separate from it. So, so the younger son had the knowing within, not merely believing by following the rules like the older son. Right? The process, yet feel, so the older son know, knew the processes, confirmed knew, that that's you. You knew the processes. You knew the affirmations. You knew it all, but you didn't feel it within, right? So that's big. Here's the key. What is the key? Here's the key. Choosing and giving yourself permission to have it all is based on the knowing, the I am within, that you already do. So big, so important. Feel the joy and naturalness of it. Do enjoy the processes for the feeling within now. Not for getting something out of it. You will. The paradox is everything will manifest. You'll get everything because you, you already have it all. Do it for the joy and the naturalness of already being God or an individualized aspect of God, that Christ within you, right? It's not about finding it earning it, struggling for it. It's about calling it forth from the field of infinite possibilities within you, right? You're calling it forth. You're calling forth an alternative reality. You're giving yourself permission to have a big bank balance, to have your bills, to have those bills paid no problem, right? You're giving yourself permission to have it all, right? That's the difference. Make your wish fulfilled Make your wish fulfilled part of your awareness. Live in the end, right? Make illuminating that future frame 
a natural part of your inner world. Make having it all a natural part of who you are. That's what we're talking about. That's how to give yourself the luxury of having it all. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos, share them with your friends, your family, your coworkers, and the channel. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful, and we also have a group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors. You can join that on Facebook. More and more of you are joining. Thank you, I love it. And um, you can also visit our website at tomkaren.com or besomethingwonderful.com. Guys, until next time, with great love, with great light, with infinite gratitude, see you soon.